Here we go. Field set for the start of the Peoria TT. A little ragged off the line. Chris Carr has a whole shot. Mike Hale and Ricky Graham right with it. We'll see if uh, Bill Werner called this shot. He thinks Hale's got the stuff to upset both of these guys, but it's Carr and Graham who get away quickly, and that may take some of the drama out of this. We won't have to see those guys work through the traffic. And the old thing about Peoria is the first guy over the jumps got the thing won. We'll see if that holds true today. And the reason is that it's a tough track on which to pass. Carr has the lead. Graham rides in second spot. You see that black rubber that they've laid down here. It is literally a groove racetrack. Further back in the field, number 16, Ronnie Jones has a good start. He's away in fourth position. And 17, Aaron Hill comes along behind him. And Carr quickly opens up the lead. I think Carr wants to just make this an absolute runaway. He doesn't want to get back there and have to race with Ricky Graham. And I think that's smart. I think that's very smart on his part. He's always fast at this racetrack. He has the opportunity to split. He's going to take off. Of course, the other side of that coin, as we saw earlier in your report at the top of the show in 1990, for reasons of fatigue or whatever, he got very sloppy over the jump and almost crashed there in a race where he had a big lead. I wonder if concentration isn't a big issue here. Yeah, I think it is an issue. You know, it's a fatiguing track, and as you wear down physically, you tend to lose your grip, if you will, on the motorcycle. And do just that. Get a little sloppy. Here you see the difference. About 10 bike lengths first to second. Graham, meanwhile, under intense pressure from Mike Hale. In terms of track time and experience, Graham is tops in this league. He won races here before Chris Carr even became an expert. Ricky's been around a long time, but he's challenged now by Hale. Hale gets that run at him every time up the front straightaway, but he isn't able to execute in turn one. And I can't help but wonder if uh, he might not be a little upset about uh, what happened in the Camel Challenge. He said, someone hit me. I guarantee you he knows who hit him. And his opinion was Ricky knocked him out. Looked to me like it might have been a tie there. But uh, regardless of responsibility, I think Hale wants to beat Graham. Well, right now he has some options at the end of the straightaway. Well, he could just stuff it underneath Ricky and, and move him over, if you will, but he's not done that so far. He's beating him off the corner, or close to beating him off the corner. No, Ricky's the first guy over the jump. He has an option at the end of that straight, and we'll see where the pass comes, if it comes. You make a good point. If, uh, if Hale felt that retaliation was in order, he's had a couple of opportunities to make it, and has decided to pass. What impressed me there was the way Graham was able to make that thing hang on, even though he appeared to be off the group. Every time Hale comes up the inside, every time Ricky is able to maintain his momentum, but as they battle, Ronnie Jones has caught them. Is Graham slowing these three guys down, maybe? Could they go faster if they could get around him? It's hard to believe that Ricky Graham would be slowing anybody down with the kind of year that he's been having, but in effect, that might be the case. He uh, certainly is not putting any pressure on Carr. Carr looks back as if to say, thank you very much. I appreciate what's unfolding here before my eyes. A remarkable sixth straight victory at the Peoria T Street track is the objective for Carr, and at the moment, it looks like it's all his for the taking, but it's a long way to go. Hale continuing his pressure on Ricky Graham. He's tried him in three and four. They'll try him up the front straight away. He's got a little better run at him this time. This may be it. Hale sticks the wheel in. Graham around, and Graham held him off again. I'm amazed at that. Every time, it looks like he's got the pass made. He does have it made, but Ricky has a high outside line coming into that turn and remarkably he's able to hold him off. Graham got that front wheel right up in front of his own face that time over the jump. Not a particularly pretty landing and again he loses a little time through the right hander but all that does is slow up the assault of Mike Hale and Ronnie Jones and uh, I think pretty clearly either of those guys could go faster than Ricky if and it's a big if at Peoria if they could get around. Here they come up and over again. See Ricky just doesn't seem comfortable on that jump and with good reason we'll be right back back at peoria and i'm a little reluctant i guess bill warner to admit that uh, i've been coming here for almost 30 years now and can remember watching guys like uh, bart markle and gary nixon do battle at this racetrack 
When I was a kid coming to this place, sitting up on the hill, I never, ever imagined that any... Whoa! Trouble. Will Davis into the hay bales. That's turn three. And Will obviously got the entrance to the left-hander all wrong. Davis, who admits that he is not a big fan of TT racing, is okay and walks away. He was back in the back of the pack. Now the track is clear. You see the yellow flag flying for Davis. This continues to be a good three-rider battle. The point I was going to make, Will, is that I didn't ever expect to see anybody win six races on this racetrack because it was always such a crapshoot. A guy had come, get hot, he'd win about two, and that was pretty much the limit. Do I remember that accurately? Well, sort of right. There was a dominant rider back in your era. His name was Bart Markle, and he won lots of races here <laughs> back in my era. I guess I'll grant you that Markle did pretty well here. I think he won six races on this track, but I also think you taught him everything he knew. This is a battle we had not expected to see. Scott Parker trying to get back into the top ten. It's the race for tenth with number 94, Jeff Annan, Parker, and Tresser. Scotty has really struggled here today. His teammate, Chris Carr, there's the bottle by Carr, another by Graham, almost a copycat move by Ricky as both riders lost the front wheel a little bit for a moment coming over the jump and they get into that familiar wiggle and uh, for Chris Carr that is shades of 1990. Here is Hale trying a little different strategy. He's looked around the outside and finds nothing there. This thing is just like a freight train and the cars keep bumping into each other. What's it going to take for Hale to make the pass? One simple mistake by Ricky and I guarantee you Mike will be by him in a heartbeat but Ricky just really smooth here. He doesn't make many mistakes. And if he doesn't make a mistake, is there a place you see where Hale can force the issue? Can Hale make it happen? He can drill him at the end of the straightaway. It's his option. <laughs> <laughs> well, he hasn't done that yet, and he doesn't do it this time, but he does get by. And sure enough, it was a combination of the two. I mean, Hale forced the issue by getting the wheel in front of him, but Ricky did make a mistake. He did make a mistake. Ricky's been going in high and making the turn. This time, he didn't make the turn. Left opening for Hale, and there you go. That's the opening he needed, and away he went. And they both got by, as we predicted they might. Hale is now second. Third is Jones. Ricky Graham falls to fourth. And who knows what might have happened if Hale had been able to do that on, say, lap three or four. Maybe he could have lived up to Werner's billing and won this race. But now he's got a huge gap to make up on Chris Carp. See how much faster he is. He could have done this earlier in the race, but he just couldn't get around Graham. It's that kind of a racetrack. Kyle looking back and grinning like a Cheshire cat says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it six in a row. He is running away from this good battle for second, third, and fourth that's been raging throughout the race. One of the things that impresses me in this battle is the performance of Ronnie Jones. This is the Ronnie Jones I remember and one I haven't seen for a while. Well, Ronnie Jones has won some TT races. He's an excellent TT racer, and I think the change of equipment has helped his effort today. Well, Rotax is working well here today. Graham looking back over his shoulder, and that means uh, that's a sign of surrender. If you're running out front like Carr, it's just a, a check on interval to make sure that you got the rest of the field covered. But when two guys have just passed you and you look back over your shoulder, that means that uh, you know there may be more to come. It is a sign of giving up, and we saw Graham concede, I think, a top three spot with that move. And so Chris Carr's unbelievable string appears destined to continue here. He's looking back every turn of the racetrack. I wonder if that's smart. I mean, should you spend that much time looking over your shoulder? Well, everybody has their own way of racing, and, and far be it for me to be a coach. But, yes, you're right. Chris Carr does that when he's in a lead. He just checks over his shoulder just to make sure nobody's catching I guess if you're as far ahead as Chris Carr, we ought not sit here and second-guess him. He can ride the whole racetrack with back over his shoulder if he wants to, as long as he continues to go that fast. But he is looking back a lot. He's keeping a very close eye on the assault of Mike Hale, who is indeed reeling Chris in. But I think Carr knows very well how many laps are left and how much ground Hale's got to make up. The only thing that's going to stop Chris Carr today is a broken motorcycle or a mistake that I think is much larger than I would expect him to make at this point. He really has this thing under control. And yeah, Mark Markle won six races on this racetrack, but when said it's done, Chris is going to win six in a row. We'll be right back. 
The final lap to the Peoria TT 1993, and look how Mike Hale has reeled in Chris Carr. Carr checking that interval over and over and over again, but now you got to wonder if he isn't thinking, I may have to gas it up a little bit, or maybe he's already gassing it up. In any case, Hale is inspired, and Hale's coming after him. Yeah, I think Hale smells it. He thinks he can win this thing, yet he's really charging. Tough to know how fast to go when you're out in front. One lap to go for Mike Hale. Will he make a desperation charge at Chris Carr? Hale has never won a national. He is so close. Carr has won five in a row on this racetrack. Up and over the jump for the final time. Oh, Hale really uncorked one, but I don't think he's going to be close enough. It'll be Chris Carr out of the final turn with a bike length lead. That should be all he needs. Hale rode the wheels off of it. Here they come to the flag. Whoa! It was close, but Carr had what he needed. Carr has made it six in a row. Ricky Graham's streak is over.